shining in the midst of the darkness shining jesus light of the world shine upon us set us free by the truth you now bring us shine on me shine on me shine jesus shine Good morning. Thanks for joining me. I'm Dave Grant. And as we are looking forward to, in just a few days, the, the day of Christmas, everybody gets a day off. Well, I shouldn't say that. Some people end up working all day. But uh, it's a, a day of celebration, the birth of Christ. I would like to take two lessons to talk about the birth of Christ. And they're both about the names of God as seen in the life of Jesus. So uh, the prophecy that Jesus would be born, uh, we've got Bethlehem, that was prophesied by Micah. We've got um, the everlasting Father is one of the names that would be given to Jesus or as Jesus went back to the glory of the Father, he became the everlasting Father. So I would like to take a few minutes today, take your Bible and follow along with me I want to look at scriptures that will help us to keep going, no matter what happens, to not give up. Uh, because the everlasting Father is uh, promised to restore and renew our strength. Now, I'm going to share a little story with you. You know how we have phrases in the English language, you got to keep plugging away. Well, where in the world did a phrase like plugging away come from? Well, I read a, a book by, uh, and I, I've got to look and see what his name is. I keep forgetting. Um, it's written by Webb Garrison. And it's the things people say. Um, keep plugging away comes from uh, what's known as a plug horse. You have the racehorse, which is sleek and fast. And when it takes off, you can't keep up with it. But after it's done its sprint, and after it's, it, it's sent out to pasture. Now, the plug horse is a completely different kind of horse. It's a horse that is hooked up to a carriage and just plugs away, just keeps plugging along isn't fast, but it does what it's supposed to do, and it pulls that carriage at a good, even pace. Now, if you put that racehorse up to that carriage, the people in it would be tumbling out. But the plug horse just keeps moving one foot in front of the other. And so it, it got the name plug horse. Well, we use that phrase to keep plugging along and it's not a negative, but rather, no matter what the difficulties, whether it's snowing or raining, we keep moving forward. We never give up. Because there is going to be a time when God will renew our strength because he has something he needs us to do. So um, I told the congregation in Escanaba a couple weeks ago that I was having trouble with the snow. Um, it just seemed like I could not lift another snow shovel of snow. It was heavy. Um, we had like two feet of snow out in Bark River. And all I could think to myself is, you know, I read about that plug horse. I need to just keep plugging away because that snow needs to be removed because we're going to get another snowstorm sometime. And if I leave that on the ground, it's going to keep piling up and I'm not going to be able to move it. So I kept plugging along, hoping that I could get it all cleared. And somehow, because I was making some type of a spiritual application, 
I had a renewal of my strength. Not that I was, you know, a young buck just moving that snow really fast, but I said, yes, I can do this. This is, this is manageable. So the Lord renewed my strength so that I could finish the job that I had started. Now, last week we looked at that in greater detail, this idea of moving forward. But I used this illustration to talk about the name of God called El Olam. Now, the name of God, God is El. The plural form is Elohim. But El always refers to God. Olam means eternal or everlasting. So the God who is everlasting. And when you think about that, the applications in the Bible where the word or name of God is El Olam, it's talking about something that you have to put your faith in that's going to always be there. He's going to keep his promises. And so the first uh, example of it is in Genesis when Abraham uh, makes a tree with a foreign nation, Abimelech, and because they started squabbling about whose well it was. There was a well for feeding the cattle, and they came to an agreement, and Abraham called on El Olam, the everlasting father, in that agreement. In other words, this is eternal. I want the God who always remembers to be the one who sanctions this agreement, this treaty. And so they, they made the agreement, and Abraham called out to El Olam. That's the first time it shows up in the Bible. But I think it's important that we understand that that God, El Olam, that Abraham called upon is the same God that we call upon today. It's just a different description of his character, a different way in which we approach him, but it's the same God. He is eternal. So if you ever feel like giving up, you'd need to get to know who El Olam is and the promises he's made. Um, there's a song that's been in my mind. I may have mentioned it a, a week ago or so. Um, I'm only human. The, the song is called Human. And um, the, the version that I heard, which was about five or six years ago, it came out, um, was Christina Perry. Some of you may know it. Um, I do remember saying to the church in Escanaba that my granddaughters asked their dad, how does grandpa know that song? <laughs> because it's, it's more geared toward the young people in the modern music, and I don't listen to a lot of music. So I don't know where I heard it, but it really made sense to me that when you think about giving up, one of the ways in which you can give up real easy is just say, hey, I'm only human. I can't do it anymore. And I know that we've all been in a position where we might think that way. And that isn't what God wants us to think about. I'm only human. No, I have the everlasting God behind me and under me and lifts up my arms so that I can soar on wings like eagles. So uh, it's a pretty song. But it's about the song it's saying, you know, I have limitations. Physically, I'm only human. I would like to suggest that we need everyone to understand that there's a promise beyond that. And that promise beyond that is God will renew our strength no matter how human we are. He has given us a new lease on life to accomplish his will. But we have to keep plugging away. We can't give up. So what I want to do is take a look at, well, I guess I mentioned it to you. El is the name of God, and Olam is translated eternal or everlasting. It shows up a couple times in the prophet Isaiah. It might show up more than just a couple, but the two that I found that I was looking at and studying for today's lesson is um, uh, under the title of Don't Give Up. And Isaiah 40 
is our, our key passage for today's lesson. So if you want to turn there, you can, but I want to start in Isaiah 9. I added this one later. Isaiah 40 is where we're going to see the promises. But Isaiah 9 is about the birth of Christ and tying the name El Olam to our Savior who was born in Bethlehem and we celebrate Christmas Day, the day he was born. Um, it's just a, it's kind of like the, the federal holidays where we've assigned December 25th to be his birthday. Um, it's the same way in our family. Uh, West got, to, uh, my grandson West, he's the youngest one, he got to celebrate his second birthday, but it was like two weeks before his birthday. He doesn't know that, and it doesn't matter. We're celebrating his birthday, his birthday year. So the key here is Jesus, the Christ, is El Olam, just as God the Father was El Olam to Isaiah. And this prophecy in, in Isaiah 9, it begins in uh, verse 6. I just want to read a couple verses for you. And you've probably heard this in the Christmas time. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end on the throne of David and over his kingdom to establish it and to uphold it with justice and with righteousness for, from this time forth and forevermore. Now this is important. The last sentence says, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. In other words, you don't have to say I'm only human. And Jesus doesn't have to say I'm only human because El Olam has said, we will accomplish this. So, at what point? Because, you know, I think about impeachment. I think about the great divide that's taking place in our country right now. It seems like 2020 will be the year of the great divide. And how there's two strong polarities. And it seems to be named Republican and Democrat. And that seems to be affecting a lot of our discussions and all in, in now and into the next year. I would like to suggest to you that that's very human. And the promise here is that the increase of his government, El Olam, will be eternal. The increase of his government will know no end. And it will be a, a government of righteousness and peace. Now, you might say, well, I don't see that right now. Well, do you want to give up and never see it? Or do you want to lift up your arms and just wait for the Lord? Because he's going to make it happen. It may not happen here on this earth in 2020. Um, I don't expect that the great divide will just come together and everybody will be happy forevermore. But those who are in Christ, those who don't give up and continue to do what is right, they will be blessed with peace that will be eternal and everlasting. Now, I've talked about the great divide. I've talked about the, the, the fact that Jesus is the one he's prophesying. His birth, to us a child is born, to us a son is given. Jesus is the everlasting Father. And yet you might say, well, he didn't have any kids. You got to quit thinking physical. You know, mom, dad, kids. Everlasting Father, because Jesus Christ is God with us. And God, El Olam, is the Father of all. And Jesus was right there in the beginning during the creation. So he's part of all of that. Now, while he was a man on earth, no, he didn't get married and he didn't have any children. But as God, he is father of us all. Now, 
Isaiah 40 is uh, another time in which this phrase is used, everlasting God. And I want to just turn over a few pages to Isaiah 40, because this is where I think if, if you've ever thought about quitting on something, um, it may be that you need to quit because it's, a, it's taking you down the wrong path, or maybe it's um, you're having temptations that you shouldn't have. Um, there's possibilities. In fact, when I was in college, I would get into a class and realize this is not directing me in the right way to accomplish my career goals. And so within a specified time, I could drop that class and take another one. And it wasn't like I was quitting. It was that I was redirecting. So there are times you need to reevaluate, reprioritize in your life. I'm not suggesting that we don't quit, that we quit doing that. What I'm suggesting is that we just don't give up and say, well, it's, it's of no use. For instance, are you going to vote in 2020? You may get so frustrated over this year with all the hatred that goes back and forth that you might say, I don't want any part of this and just give up. Please don't give up. The Lord wants you to continue to do what's right. And in America, that's our, that's our way of doing business is we keep doing what is right. That means you keep voting because you're a citizen of the United States. You have to learn that some people are not following the godly way. But that doesn't change who you are. We keep doing what is right. And I've got more to come on that right after the first of the year. Uh, in February, we're going to do some specials on how to keep going in a a country, and you know, I've never had to say this before, but it, it feels like our country is full of hate. And I'd like to see us turn this around. Why can't we respect one another, even when we don't agree with one another? I think we should. We've got to learn how. So uh, Isaiah 40, oh, I went past it. And I'm going to read 28 through 31. And Isaiah is a prophet. He gets his messages from God and he shares it with the people. It's God's way of communicating. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. Now that's pointing to the fact that, well, I do. I am physical. So do I want to be involved with a God who is eternal and everlasting and does not faint and does not grow weary? I want to attach myself there. I need someone to renew my strength. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint. And to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youths shall faint and be weary. And young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not be faint. So um, I think I've mentioned to you, uh, one of my friends, uh, Jerry Tallman, um, has been struggling with uh, cancer um, for a couple years now. And it keeps popping up in different places, and it's stage four melanoma, and he does not see any way to beat it unless God heals him or if God takes him home. There's, it, it's one of those things that you can kind of see how he's gone downhill. Now, he has not changed at all in his spirit. He is still the same man he ever was, and he waits for the Lord to renew his strength. Now, I think facing cancer, facing, uh, well, he's in hospice now. If I, if I was told, okay, we're, we can't do anything more for you, we're going to put you in hospice care. It's very possible a lot of us would be crushed. We would be broken. Jerry just doesn't seem to get broken like that. 
but I'm sure he thinks about it. And what he did to overcome that, that tendency to want to feel sorry for himself, he said, I want to look at some of the promises of God each day so that I can be reminded that he's made me promises that I can't possibly ever thank him enough for. And yet he's dying. Do you see how actually his body is growing faint? His body needs strength. But in his spirit, he has been renewed. And God renews him every day. I was uplifted after talking to him. So that's our goal, is to be renewed in the strength. And if our body is ready to go, so be it. That doesn't change who I am and how I will be with the Lord for everlasting. So don't give up. Rather, give in. Give in to the Lord's will. Keep plugging away. And I think it might even be good. I'm gonna, I've been practicing it. Just lift your arms and ask the Lord to renew your strength. And he says, you'll mount up on wings like eagles. So it's very possible that I can soar like an eagle even though my body is giving up. Do you see my point? This body is only a temporary tent, a temporary place where I'm living. But it's not designed to last forever, and it won't. So why not focus on what will be forever? And I'm, I'm hopefully going to go out with the same grace that Jerry Tallman is so that he can mount up on wings like eagles. Ah, that's a lot to look forward to. That's a special, special promise of God. Now, given just saying that doesn't mean that we can automatically do it. It's going to take some training. It's going to take some behavior modification. It's going to cause us to have to start relying on God day to day. Um, there were many of the Old Testament uh, characters, our heroes of faith, who um, were at some point in their life ready to give up. And I want to just look at three of them. They, they reached a point where you can see in their writings that they're desperate. They're just, they just want to quit. And yet, because God was their everlasting Father, they stayed the course, continued to do what was right, and God renewed their strength and they continued to serve him faithfully. They would be good examples for us to follow. Because if you get to the point where you want to give up, you need to look at someone who made it through. Job chapter 3. Let's turn there together. Job chapter 3. Um, the only way I can help you find this is go to the middle of your Bible. And you've got Psalms, Proverbs, and that's a big part of the middle of your Bible. Go back to Job. Job's right before the Psalms. And in chapter 3, I'm going to read the first four verses. Job's a, a struggle story. Everything that he had was taken away by Satan, the accuser. And he was desperate. He was in despair. In verse 1 of chapter 3, it says, After this, Job opened his mouth and cursed the day of his birth. And Job said, Let the day perish on which I was born. And the night that said a man is conceived, let that day be darkness. May God above not seek it, nor light shine upon it. Now that is desperation. He is so near to saying, I give up on life altogether. But then I want you to also look at verse 11. Just drop down. Why did I not die at birth, come out from the womb and expire? So he wants to know, why was I born into this world just to suffer this way? And I know other people have experienced that feeling. Job goes through it. He keeps working. 
and keeps talking to God about it, and eventually he gets his answer. And God renews his strength. I don't have time to get into the other two, but I do want to start that first thing next week. And then we'll kind of close up this topic of don't give up, just give in, lift up your arms, and wait for the Lord. He will renew your strength. So next week we'll, we'll start with um, 1 Kings. And then when we close this idea up, we're going to talk about Emmanuel, which is E-L at the end. That means God. So what does Emmanuel mean? And that's the name that was given to Jesus when he was born. Now, you might say, well, I thought he was called Jesus. He had more than one name. So as a spiritual birth of Christ, Emmanuel was his name. As the physical man born, his name was Jesus, which means God saves. So um, you can have more than one name, descriptive names. God has more than one name. He has very descriptive names. So join me next week for that. Before I go, though, I want to offer our Bible course that's free of charge. You can take it in the privacy of your home at your own pace. And if you don't have a Bible to study with, you can write to me, call, go online, and we have a hardcover English Standard Version Bible, the same one I read on the program, and I'll be happy to send it to you free of charge. When you request the course and the Bible, I'll send out the booklet one, and then when you complete it, you send it back in, and we'll send lesson two in the mail. Now, you can write to me at the Church of Christ in Escanaba, and our zip there is 49829. Um, I do all the mail through the post office, P.O. Box 751 in Escanaba. And online, I will probably get back to you within a day or two. Um, so if you want to take the course of the Bible, go to our webpage, and you can uh, send in a request for the course, the Bible, or both. If you have a prayer request, we also offer... Um, there's prayer warriors at the Escanaba Church where I minister. And we pray every time we're together about the concerns that people have in their life. So I would like to suggest that you take the time to let us know what your prayer concern is, and we will pray about it. Now, I'm real excited about next week's program. We're going to conclude Don't Give Up, and then we're going to talk about Emmanuel. What does that name of God mean? I want to thank you for being with me today. It's been very exciting, and I'm looking forward to our next lesson. God bless. Glory blaze, spirit blaze, set our hearts on fire. Flow, river flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send.